The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum. It is 10 o'clock exactly, Monday, 25th of February, and you're listening to me, Shamiza, on Where Else? The Urban Cube Show. We're going live and direct to the lovely people of the surrounding areas of Luton, as well as Peterborough and Sheffield this morning. So, a massive, big, hearty salams to you all, and, um, and I hope you're enjoying this fabulous, fabulous, bright bright beautiful monday morning i hope you've had an awesome weekend and having a great start to the week uh, inshallah now we're giving you a bit of monday motivation and inspiration on the show this morning i'm joined by another wealth of guests who are going to be inspiring us with some uh, creative creative tips and um, a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of their their life journey on the show this morning, mashallah. Now the show is The Urban Cube, brought to you every Monday, 10 till 12. Now we're also li- uh, live, We can ca- you can catch all the action on Facebook. They're actually waving to the camera, people. On cue, as always, so the cameras, you can catch Where whoever's the in camera? there. Uh, the camera's it? just over there. <laughs> now, um, you can join in with any of the conversation. You can either WhatsApp us on any of the topics that we're going to be talking today. And we're going to be talking, guys, about a lot of interesting things. We're going to be talking closet gaming. Yes, sci-fi, <laughs> colour run and cake. It's all happening on the show this morning. <laughs> and we actually have cake in the studio, people, yes. baked by our guest. Rosa. Rosa has baked the cake and it's actually a pecan pie. I've never mm. had pecan pie. Oh, you're in for a treat. Oh, yeah. oh. You've missed out. You haven't lived if you haven't. Oh, had my you goodness. You are going to get a taste test on the show this morning. <laughs> now, the wonderful, wonderful ladies in the studio with me are no other than Kerry Manan. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, salam. And we have Rosa Gala. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum assalam. And who <laughs> else? It's no other than Salma Khan. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, she's, she's got a quiet she's really gone quiet she was not quiet before the show believe me now these wonderful ladies are going to be sharing um some very well they're going to be keeping me company in the studio as well as you guys as well so oh you'll be finding out a little bit more about them very very shortly now on the show this morning um not on the show but on inspire fm this morning we had the pleasure of brother Tarek talking about the launch of climate climate week really um inspire fm is actually making sure that you guys and us are very much aware of what's going on regarding climate change um and so it's a whole week dedicated to just climate and why not um it's an important (laughs) issue uh the weekend was lovely and warm and bright and it was so sunny and it's got a little bit chilly again i'm Mm -hmm. a little bit confused so i mean like well it is february it is february (laughs) kerry tell me how's your weekend been kerry oh alhamdulillah it's been nice yeah i've been loving the the lovely weather it's kind of confused my brain into thinking i should be spring cleaning Mm. Mm. yeah so that i started that with ernest at the weekend so not that exciting and it it is the start of the spring spring i'm seeing like daffodils blooming and a bit of like you know um i actually saw lavender i was surprised to see lavender um and i saw a few daisies are you into wildflowers ladies um definitely i'm one of those people that kind of will always have uh, her um her phone on hand as in this is my walking camera (laughs) so i will stop and i will be taking random pictures of things and definitely not people because i'm not too fond of people (laughs) and uh, (laughs) she's the the show this morning (laughs) (laughs) she does like people honest but she's an upcoming comedian (laughs) so we'll get to find out a little bit more about rosa and her personality Uh but did you capture any flowers on the way uh not today but uh, last week we were um doing a project with my work at lucy farm park and uh, i actually caught pictures of daisies oh, lovely. on they- the way home afterwards so daisies always make me happy do you have yeah. a favorite wildflower 
If there's a flower that's just, just to describe you. Anything that's as close to a weed. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm sure. The, the, not. the simplest and the, the most, uh, um, the most, most resilient. Uh, ah, yeah. I like that, Kerry. Yeah. I quite like that, yeah. <laughs> the, the simple flowers, the ones that actually people wouldn't look at twice. I'm the kind of, I grew up in the countryside. I'm, uh -huh. I'm literally the um, Italian equivalent of a redneck, basically. So I grew up in the countryside, and for me, uh, picking up flowers that are wild, the little ones, uh -huh. the ones that people wouldn't look at twice, to me, that's like putting together a bouquet for my mum kind of thing you know it's the kind of thing you would do because uh, everybody can grow flowers in a garden you know but it takes a lot more work to actually go and walk around uh, you know in, in and, and pull in, them out from the and soil <laughs> really? yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, and bring them to uh, Salva okay. yeah. <laughs> Salva's giggling in the corner you Salva have this haven't you uh, have you experienced Say this it. as like a mum of mashallah is it five boys or four boys four boys and do they do they give you bouquets of flowers no they pick flowers off other people's gardens <laughs> and give them to me <laughs> oh. so they do that uh -huh. but my husband he's into the whole garden scene oh not cool me. yeah mine he, too he bought olive trees yeah Oh, wow. He's bought um, these ones that look like palm trees. And I'm yeah. I said to him, oh. what are you trying to make my garden into? Like, <laughs> It's a beautiful retreat. Yeah. Well, but it's really nice, actually, but I don't go to the garden. I just think the inside is my domain. <laughs> you look after the outside. Because as soon as I step outside... It's the, the insect's domain. <laughs> no, I just don't want to be there, like, because I've got enough to do inside, yeah, like absolutely. spring cleaning and yeah, everything. Yeah, 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 I'm with you on you that You look one. after outside. Yeah. So. Okay. So I like looking at it. So, okay, so you divided the roles. Yes. So you're allowing your husband to be kind of the domestic king of the garden. Yes. Are these the sort of roles that you've kind of divided in your homes, ladies? Um, yeah, Carrie, yeah, I mean, me, I'm, I'm very much resonating with what you're saying. Mm. I've got the same thing. My husband keeps trying to entice me out yes, same. to the garden with, <laughs> oh, my back's hurting, can you do a bit of weed pulling? Uh, no. no. <laughs> um, but also, my husband's from a, an Asian background, right. so he has this fascination with chilies. <gasps> and he, we've got two huge trucks in my garden full of chilies. Oh, like wow. just yeah, he tries to grow all the nuggets, you know, like the super potent ones. Oh goodness me! Yeah, yeah, and at some points, various points, he has to bring them inside because it'll be too cold or whatever. And my my whole house just turns out being like a greenhouse full of chilies everywhere. <laughs> oh, so that's he's lovely, he's, he's that's the green nice. fingered one, not me. No. Uh, and yeah. what about you, uh, uh, Rosa? Because you've talked about sort of weeds and. I can, and... Ooh, I can make. I I joke about it that I can make almost anything germinate. I'm just yeah, not very good with the stuff from care. your pips that you've had your fruit, don't Ooh, you? The yeah. date pips. <laughs> so I've got a couple of avocado plants from uh, the actual nuts from avocados bo supermarket bought. Uh, kind of about that tall, but it's only because it stays in the pot. It's wintering mm. out at the minute. Um, also some palms from uh, Ramadan dates. So and you've actually yeah, germinated them. them. She just and, sticks and them in. in the pot and like, wow. and, uh, you know, weeks later, cool. I do. weeks later they're coming up and I've got some of those She's got as the well. magic hand. That's oh, what it is. Know. She yeah, has it is. got the touch. Oh, you are know. beyond weeds. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> this is super, super awesome. <laughs> Folks, if you've just tuned in, you are listening to The Urban Cube with Misha Miser. It is eight minutes past ten. It's a glorious, sunny, but slightly cold day across Luton, uh, Monday 25th of February. Now I'm joined by a tremendous wealth of guests. They are actually local sisters joining me in the studio this morning and we're talking everything from spring cleaning to gardening mm -hmm. to actually growing mm -hmm. palm trees in our gardens yes. and we're, and it's all happening on the show this morning. If you want to join in with any of the conversation, you know what to do. It is WhatsApp us on 07779481822 and you might get some gardening tips as well from our lovely Rosa <laughs> who's in the studio this morning with me. Now a little bit about our guests. I have already mentioned they are local, which is absolutely fantastic because we I normally have a lot of outside Luton guests. So it's wonderful to have three tremendous women um, joining us locally from Luton in the studio. So I have the very tremendous creative writer, blogger, blogger, closet gamer, and I'm going to say this, I need to add this, upcoming comedian. Oh, don't know about oh, that. Oh, I really like that. <laughs> she is no other than Rosa Gala, who um, is also in the studio with me alongside... 
Kerry Manan, who um, are going to be the regular voices on the Welcome to Islam show. So it's an absolute tr- pleasure to have you join us this morning on the show. Now, both Kerry and Rosa are part of a fantastic group set up for Luton um, Reverts. It's called the L- Luton Revert Group, and it's a group run by reverts for new, who are new to who new Muslims geared towards creating a meeting space for new Muslims and their families to interact, share their experience, and receive as well as give support and organising educational talks to help the members grow in their faith. So an absolute pleasure to have you join us this morning, ladies. Assalamu alaikum again. Wa alaikum assalam. And you're going to be talking to us a little bit more about uh, this group that you, you have set up, which was launched about two years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're actually volunteers on this group. So we're going to be finding out a little bit more about the revert community in Luton and also finding out what not to say to a revert. <laughs> oh, goodness. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> because I know you've had some very interesting interesting experiences and we're going to kind of make it a little bit you know comedic because that's what you're all about Rosa I don't know. Uh, <laughs> look at her she's being modest now she's being <laughs> modest um but they are not the only two guests in the studio we're also joined by the manager of uh, the Luton Food Bank now she kept that a little bit quiet she was Ooh. a the coordinator mm. and now she's the manager and, wow. and she's saying to me Shmiza will you stop saying she's that she's had a promotion have you <laughs> that's nice. so cool <laughs> She's pretending not to be so important so that she doesn't have the, the extra responsibility. It's like, ooh. Salva, you're it's just so as pink cool. as that lovely pink scarf on your, on, uh, you know, that you're wearing, your hijab. It's okay, darling. She's, she's actually throwing daggers at you like I, I know am. She is. Is. I know she is. She's going to so get me. But In congratulations on your role. <laughs> now, Salma, you've had a tremendous impact mm-hmm. on the town um, and also inspired lots of initiatives. You may not know it, but a lot of folk that I've shared the work of the Luton Food Bank have been very much inspired by the projects that you're doing. And one of those projects is a colour run a color run out in the open yes. where you're getting people to come together and to run and hopefully they'll get to see some wild flowers <laughs> out in the open oh and, that's wonderful and yes. when is it yes oh that's what's going of march is so, it actually run run or can you walk park. you can run you can walk you can I'll dance walk. wherever you are wow <laughs> so tell us firstly thank you for joining us on the show and also congratulations to the fundraising effort that luton food bank had um achieved via the sport of inspire fm and the beautiful community of Luton how much money was raised for the winter warm campaign over ten thousand pounds wow I don't know exactly I think about ten and a half thousand but Inspire FM the community the listeners are always amazing whenever we actually make a call they answer so we get the money that we need for campaigns that we're doing and unfortunately we are at a time where the numbers are not slowing down they're going up and Mm -hmm. up and so when you say numbers what does that mean food parcels so we give out food parcels every week so we give them out seven times a week um from distribution points and um during the winter in december we gave the largest number of food parcels ever which was over 400 why has it got to the point where you're having to give out more what is happening is it because more people are actually identifying or being identified so we think that it's because um more people are struggling okay more people are in crisis and some is due to the universal credit changes okay. mm-hmm. so people's benefits are changing mm-hmm. um they're not they don't know how to cope with the change mm-hmm. um what happens is some people are on different different benefits mm-hmm. and what they have they've done has changed it and made it into one benefit so if you're getting your housing benefit and that's been paid to your landlord and now you've given you've been given that money for some people not all that could be, seem like oh wow i've got so much money and they don't know how to manage okay. their money oh. which means they spend their money <clears throat> and then they're left in arrears For Mm -hmm. others, however, it takes quite a long time for their benefits to change over, which means they're left with nothing. And this is the the situation where actually reading a lot in the papers where it's impacted the family so much so, which has had a massive, big, unfortunate results where people have actually lost lives because they cannot handle or manage the the outcome yeah really. I know it's really sad like sometimes I put myself and most of the time I put myself in those shoes and I think what if tomorrow something happened and um I got ill or my husband and we could we didn't have that income if one of us gets ill and he has to look after me he has to leave his job mm-hmm. and then you have to rely on the food bank and that really affects you mentally doesn't okay. it um and I think people don't know 
the extent that those people have to go to to go to get a food parcel. Right. And you don't just walk in off the street, do you? There's no, actual there's procedures. Actual process. Yeah. And the process is there because of people like Inspire FM that donate to us. We need to make sure that it's going to the right people. It's targeted. Um, and it's unfortunate for them that they have to use us, but we have to do that too. And we do that to also help them too. So we go through a voucher process with them and we work in partnership with Citizen, citizen Advice. Yeah. So once they've got the food, we'll ask them to go get support and advice to get them out of that situation because usually they're entitled to some sort of benefits and they don't know about mm. them. If you're working all your life, you don't know what benefits you're entitled to. Of course. No. And is it true as well that actually you're getting an increased number of actually working families that are having to resort to food bank, not just those that are on benefits, but actually even ones where two parents are working but they're just not getting enough income? I, I can't say that for sure, but we do get working people that use us mm. too. We're a bit back... S- statistics are suggesting that a lot of working parents are being impacted. Um, yeah, I'm, I couldn't say about food bank because mm. we're a bit behind on our statistics, right. but what's happened is a lot of food is coming in and out that we haven't had the time to process all the vouchers so it just shows you how busy we are actually are ten thousand pounds was raised yes some people would argue well that's a lot of money why do you need to do the color run and and keep fundraising because we need to keep that income coming in because we're giving food out so if you look at a food parcel and we've given out 400 um, and we're saying i mean i'm just going to do this right now so i could come I'm just going to work out how much one food parcel costs. So let's do this. I should know this probably, but... Maths. Folks, if you've just tuned in, you're listening to The Urban Queue with Misha Mize. It's 10.15 and uh, on the show this morning, we are going live and direct to the wonderful people of Luton surrounding areas, Peter and Sheffield this morning. I'm joined by Salma Khan, who is um, a man- the manager at the local Luton Food Bank. And she's just basically sharing with us some statistics and information relating to uh, the food food bank and really also talking about some of the projects that are going to be happening that we hope you will get involved because today's show is about enjoying spring and the fresh air and getting out and about with your local communities as well and the colour run seems to be the perfect thing to do that it does and like we were saying the £10,000 so we gave out 400 parcels in one week and that costs us £6,000 to give out so that gives you the context of how much it is so if you do £15 per parcel which I've just done Times that by 400, that's 6,000 pounds. Wow. So we are estimating that this year we will give out 12,000 parcels. Okay. Um, and that's a 30% increase from the year before. Mm-hmm. And we, weren't, we were hoping to reduce the parcels or even close as a food bank, but that hasn't happened. Yeah. Each year on year, what we've seen is an increase in food parcels and it is going up by 15, 20%, 30%. And this year we mm. see it at 30%. Do you think... It will slow down. No, I don't. The demand. I mean, the time that I've been there, all I can see is going up and up. And people might be thinking at home, oh, she's always doing campaigns. She's always spamming us <laughs> with this campaign or that campaign. Mm. But for me, yes, we do um, food drives. We've done the Inspire FM winter campaign. But what I try to do is try to get different people involved. That's okay. why I'm doing the colour run. Yeah. A lot of people run. A lot of people want to do something, but they can't come to the food bank and give out the food right. to the people. Okay. But yeah, you can run for us. When you're running this year, we've done it. So we've done it at £25 to to run with us last year was a minimum of 100 pound sponsorship we changed that because we thought there might be people out there who've used the food bank who want to give back and mm-hmm. that's their way of giving back mm-hmm. so we've done it at 25 pound cost 10 pound covers the registration cost and 15 pound pays for a food parcel so in essence you're running to feed a person in luton yeah. so what is the color run exactly um what what happens you run um, 5k in Wardown Park and we splash colour on you. So if any of you know holy <laughs> colour. Sounds glorious. <laughs> Splashing colour. Are you well, finished with I have, that? but I wanted you to explain it. And you know what? It was Abs- it was so much fun it was, it was, it was so was. much fun I went with my children yes. I didn't know what to expect um, <laughs> we went the wrong direction but that's fine <laughs> it's taking part isn't it it was all about taking part I lost my kids but that's fine they were running ahead them again. of me they went the right direction I went the wrong direction and we met in the middle somewhere but it was an experience and it was just beautiful to see parts of the community I've not met before um, it's a real celebration of coming together and you know what better to do it when you're having fun and you're actually really raising for a good cause. So folks, I would strongly recommend getting involved. Um, Rosa and Carrie, is that something that you might get involved with? I mean, it's outdoors. 
Yeah, I'm not known for my running. That's more my you husband's can walk bag. Here. You can but, me either. You know, when I'm motivated and if I'm free, you know, you never know. I could like get to a at least a fast breathing pace. A little trot. <laughs> <laughs> a trot. I like a that, trot. Rose. Are you going to trot? I'll just be, you know, kind of very less graceful, but yeah. <laughs> Arms and legs, everyone. It's all for a good cause. <laughs> I definitely run like so, like a nerd. I really do. Um, I did the race for life a few years ago. Oh, uh, so that was 5K. Yeah, but that meant training five days a week. Oh, wow. And I'm not there at all. At mm. all. But something that you might be more interested in, because you bought us a bit of a treat, it's a pecan pie, and it might mm. be, and it kind of links in very nicely to um, another fundraising effort yes. to do with cakes. And oh, we all love cakes. Yes, we do. Oh, that sounds like something I could get on board with. Yes. Yeah, so we're doing a Mother's Day afternoon tea. Perfect. Um, and um, we wanted to do something different. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to do it because I think Mother's Day is a nice day and a lot of people want to take their mothers out and we wanted to make it a bit affordable as well because the prices tend to go up on Mother's Day when okay. you're taking your mums out. And we take our mum out, so we know. So I thought, let's do something that the price will stay the same. So it's mm-hmm. £15 per person. And if a family wants to come, you can book a table for £120. Mm. Um, and you're supporting a good cause. That's the, bit, that's the main thing about it. Um, and also, I feel um, when you read stories about people that sacrifice, it's normally the mothers that mm. sacrifice mm-hmm. their food to ensure that the children eat. So the children, I mean, I can say that from myself as well. Not that I sacrifice my food. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm feeding my children, they don't know if I've eaten or not. Mm. I tend no. to feed them first mm. and then I'll feed myself. So they wouldn't know if I went hungry anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a time to appreciate your mums who keep everything together and um it's a little way of saying thank you absolutely um, and when is this happening on the 31st of march mm-hmm. now how can people get in contact with you regarding the collar run and this a M- mother's tea event so we've got it on inspire fm website mm-hmm. or i'll get, and i'll ask Tarek to send out the links and everything but you can just go on our website www.lutonfoodbank.org.uk mm-hmm. Now, we've been talking about cakes and the wonderful Rosa has brought a gorgeous pecan pie into the studio. And, I, you know, the, I can smell the whole the whole studio is just... Mm. I toasted awaft. them. I toasted mm. the pecans. Toasted. Of course, you toast the pecans mm. before you actually put them in to actually bake it. It gives that extra nuttiness to them. But uh, I like to joke about the fact that I find recipes online and oh. after I've done them a couple of times, they become the family recipe. Oh, <laughs> I like the way you've done that. The family recipe. Of course, this is, this is an old family recipe because <laughs> way back I like when, that. we must have been American at some point and we did pecan <laughs> pies and, you know. <laughs> I love that. Do you mind just showing the camera the pecan pie oh, extraordinary? Yeah. Which, folks, is actually a family recipe. It's a family it's, recipe. You know, she, she made it from her kitchen. It's not come out of a packet no, nor no, a no. box. And the pastry. It's got the rustic look The about rustic it. one. It's very edgy. Very edgy. Very rustic. Um, we're going to be t- trialling out that pecan pie um, in the break, inshallah. And we'll be giving our verdict on how rustic this pie is. But, folks, if you'd like to join in with any of the conversations on today's show, hence, if you want to find out a little bit more about the... Luton hmm. Revert Group, which has been, um, um, Rosa is part of the management committee and um, Kerry is actually the chair of the Luton Revert Group. This has happened two years ago. Uh, this is launched two years ago specifically to cater for the needs of the um, Revert community in Luton. Both the sisters in the studio today are also going to be regular voices on the Welcome to Islam show. That mm-hmm. is the name of the show, right, it ladies? Is. Yes. It is, yeah. Indeed. And when does that show actually happen? We have uh, we've got a schedule that we're actually putting together at the moment, so we mm. haven't got set dates as yeah. yet. But it does run. It's currently being run at the moment, so it's currently airing on Sundays at six o'clock. Fantastic. We just uh, we're looking at increasing our presence because yeah. I think we're addressing slightly the balance. The brothers have had the upper yeah. edge. I've uh-huh. been a guest. While. We've been a guest on the show a couple of times. Um, but they kind of want us to step up a little bit and uh, run with it and actually run a show probably at least once a month. So that's (laughs) why we kindly got in touch with you and you said, come on down and see how I do it, see how the pro does it. (laughs) I don't think so. That's what we said. So we said, we'll go and see how Shamiza does it and uh, get some tips. 
you, good you, well, your ears must have been burning yeah. because literally when uh, when we when uh, Kerry um, raised it as a, as an option for us to actually increase our activity and our presence online. Um, um, the first person I thought of is who do we go to tap for info? Yeah. And oh, I'm going, bless. right, that's it. She's she's an endless pool of knowledge. She's like the Wikipedia of radio. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're talking about Salma Khan here. All right, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so this show, uh, Welcome to uh, Islam, is going to have the wonderful Kerry and uh, Rosa t- taking over the airwaves on Mondays, inshallah. Um, it is Mondays, right? No, no Sundays. 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 Yeah, I need to get it right. We so c- Sunday. We couldn't do it when you're doing it. We would be kind of, you know... Unless we come and take over your show. Totally. I would be more than happy to do that. Now, um, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the show you're listening to, folks, is the Urban Cube and not the Welcome to Islam show. I just got to get that right because these ladies are going to be taking over, it sounds like. But it's a good thing. This is what it's all about. Um, on today's show, we're also kind of getting to find a little bit more about the uh, colour run and um, the mother's, uh, mother's Cake event which is happening tea for mothers to raise uh, afternoon tea afternoon that's it let's get that right <laughs> oh, yeah, i'm completely flabbergasted here i'm lost for words um whilst we uh whilst uh, we are cutting to the break what i'm going to be doing is enjoying a bit of pecan pie a rustic one created by the very hands of rosa um the same hands that are actually known for gaming as well so we're going to be talking about sci-fi thumbs. and gaming getting those thumbs out we'll also be giving you a review of this uh, this family made cake um we're going to be talking to you about a lot of other things on the show as well especially um as because uh, we're most of us are parents in the show this morning it is the first day back uh, for a lot of the kitty winks back to school france is actually changing names of parents to parent one and parent two i've seen an article so no mummy and daddy it's parent one and parent two is that right is, do you think there's truth in that let's get to the go to the break and after we'll... assalamu alaikum this is atif nawaz listen to inspire fm shows in your time by heading over to inspirefm.org or listen on apple podcasts or spotify Good morning and assalamu alaikum. 10.30 exactly, Monday 25th of February and you're listening to Misha Miser taking you all the way up to 12 o'clock on where else? It's the Avon Cube brought to you on Inspire FM. 105.1 FM and we are going live and direct to Luton surrounding areas, Peterborough and Sheffield this morning. So assalamu alaikum to everybody. It is the first day back at school for a lot of the kitty winks this morning. It is, uh, half term is over and I'm sure a lot of parents are like, some of you might be like, oh, and others are like, yay, let's get them back to school. Are you one of those parents? Do tell me. I would love, I would love to find out from you this morning. Um, were you able to get re- get them ready on time and out? Believe it or not, my children got up really early. I couldn't believe it. I was like, yay, um, this is absolutely fantastic. Could it carry on for the rest of the term? Who knows? Who knows? Um, on today's show, we are talking to and getting inspired by some lovely local ladies um, in the studio this morning who, if, you, if you're catching on the camera right now, mm. they're actually busy, busy <laughs> eating pecan pie. Yes, we have pecan pie in the studio um, and that's been brought in by the very fabulous Rosa Gala who is our guest in the studio this morning, Mashallah, and she's actually pr- baked this pecan pie and it's a and mm-hmm. she's brought little tins in for us as well and cream too we'll be finding out the verdict oh, of Carrie the, brought the cream oh did mm-hmm. Carrie bring the mm-hmm. cream oh, yeah. and um, Carrie's busy eating just allow her to carry on yeah, eating yeah I'm being totally unprofessional oh, here that, that's what that's what happens but on this show pecan pie you just can't say no and, and the verdict, Salma? <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy. <laughs> Carrie, I can't tell you. Uh, I can't ask you because you it's your homemade recipe and um very, very authentic. Yeah. It's a family recipe. Well, Rustic, family recipe. Roasted <laughs> pecan nuts. I'm just going to have a bit of a taste myself. Mm. That is mighty fine. Mm. That is oh, really good. good. It's not just for radio. <laughs> it's not, no, it's for life. Mm. We're just going to have silence now for the next five <laughs> minutes on air. That's why we just haven't stopped eating. <laughs> so, folks, um, 
do excuse me, my manners. Where is the etiquette here? But <laughs> the pie is too good. Mashallah, mashallah. Mm. Um, is there any way we could share the recipe? Or is this complete... Is it on your blog? Because you are also no, a creative writer, a blogger, a sci-fi fanatic, and also a closet gamer. She calls herself a nerd as well. Mm. There's so many other descriptions, but mm. um, I'm, but you you seriously bake a great pecan pie. Mm. Tell us a little Something bit more wrong. about this pie <laughs> taking center stage of this show. Well, it's supposed to be um, uh, southern uh, states. Um, traditional recipe that they do for Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm a great, uh, I'm adventurous in 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 everything that I do, uh, including food, especially food, as you can tell. I'm not the, I'm not particularly skinny mini, so uh, um, I thought to myself, I've never tried it. Let's have a go, and uh, so I just. Simply went online, found uh, a few recipes, and thought, right, what do I have in the cupboard that actually I can use, I can substitute? Because let's face it, it's not uh, a health food. <laughs> you would it's too good to be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of butter that went in it. Oh, cheers, love. Tell me now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, tell butter. us after we've finished. <laughs> oh, it's okay. And the amount of yeah, the amount of butter, the amount of sugar. <laughs> I can imagine, actually. <laughs> it, it is luscious. It's mm. really, really luscious. Folks, if you just tuned in and you're wondering why does she sound as if she's got a mouthful of food in her mouth, well, you're actually correct in thinking so. I am guzzling pecan pie, and it's a glorious dish created by our guest, Rosa, this morning. And it's smothered mm. not just in butter and sugar, but also double cream <laughs> brought in by the lovely Kerry. Now, they are the guests on the show this morning, mashallah, alongside Salma Khan. And we're just getting inspired by some of the creativity um, and community engagement that they are doing across the town this morning. Now, Perry Manan is our. Uh, uh, guest in the studio this morning she is a local mother mother of two mashallah she um came to islam 13 years ago mm. alhamdulillah that's a uh, long time ago now mashallah does it seem like a long time it ago? does feel like a long time ago yeah wow wow and she's a local mum, born and bred yeah in luton yeah l and d that's <laughs> where she was L&D. at yay the very lovely l and d um and she is now part of the she's a chair of the Luton Revert group a uh, a group formed two years ago um, with the purpose of kind of bringing together the Revert community in Luton and providing some support and assistance and direction and aware you know just just networking I'm um I'm assuming so, but it doesn't stop there because the Carrie and Rosa, who is also part of the management committee of the Luton Revert Group, they are the voices that you're going to hear on um, the Sunday show for uh, the uh, Welcome to Islam show. So, mashallah. So, they're on the show today plugging that. So, welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and congratulations on the imports that you're having as part of the Luton Revert Group, which was launched two years ago. Why was it launched? Um, well, it was launched by a couple of uh, local people, actually not uh, reverts themselves, but they noticed that the new Muslims in Luton weren't always getting the support they needed. Mm-hmm. There are uh, a few groups within Luton, like, for example, there's a sisters group um, where they might meet at a sister's home and they might have a bit of a halakha, like a meeting and talk about Islamic issues. Mm-hmm. But they kind of felt that there wasn't something that quite met the social needs for new Muslims because there's always a lot of hurrah when um, somebody takes Mm shahada. But quite often, once everyone's got over that, oh, you know, welcome, you know, it's so amazing you've decided to accept Mm -hmm. Islam, there's kind of a bit of a tail off. And people can end up feeling a little bit isolated, especially with a bit of a culture clash too. Mm -hmm. Um, Because obviously being in Luton, mashallah, we do have a very large Muslim community, but they are predominantly from the Asian backgrounds. And so sometimes there is a little bit of a culture clash. Mm -hmm. um, And so you do get sometimes a little bit of a loss of identity, um, a little bit of misinformation about what needs to be done as a new Muslim. So these uh, individuals, they identify that there should be something more 
to welcome new Muslims. So this group was set up about two years ago. And I think actually I might have gone to maybe the first or second one of the meetings that they mm. um, started doing at the Hockwell Ring Community Centre. And I was um, intrigued because although I've been established as a Muslim for 13 years now and quite settled, I'm married and I have children, there was something that just kind of resonated with me in the kind of like them reaching out and saying, you know, we're here to support new Muslims. Do you ever kind of feel that you might be isolated or need support? And I I didn't quite feel like I, I don't know, I can't articulate that I felt that I needed support, but I just felt like a pull to go. I thought, well, okay. I'll go and see. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested to see what they actually have to offer. And alhamdulillah, I met some amazing people. And from then on, we just kind of formed a committee mm -hmm. said we really want to move forward with this and that's what we've done we've just gone from strength to strength haven't we rosa and you know i remember that very first meeting you attended because it was also my very first meeting mm. and like with anything in life i take my lead from my wonderful daughter that actually has never stirred me wrong once and she said to me it would be good for you to have a connection with other uh, with other new muslims mm -hmm. and that would actually help you along the way and uh, and that's how I found myself venturing into the depths and the wilds of Hockwell Ring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and she'd park. never treaded that way before, had you Rosa? Not? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's just okay. I, I love the parks in Hockwell Ring, actually. They've got two really <clears> lovely <throat> parks that which I regularly visit. Now, what support has been initiated and what makes this group different to what you may have originally been to? Um, this group's different in that um, it's not a segregated group, so okay. it's not specifically for sisters or brothers. Um, but it's very much aimed at because when you when you accept Islam, you you're not just taking on the faith as an individual. You're kind of taking your family along with you. Right. So even especially if you've got. Um, if you're from a family of non-Muslims, you're going to have family and friends who are seeing you making these changes and be wanting to know more about it. So we very much strongly feel that, you know, to encourage people to bring maybe their parents or their brother or sister wow, or their yeah. friends helps them to articulate what it is about Islam that they've found mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also validate them in some ways to show look they're not the only one okay. you know there are other people there's a community, that go, there's a community yes. and you know that there's other people going through similar things mm -hmm. and and it's also i suppose in a way it's a little bit kind of a dawah in a way it's kind of helping the new muslim to kind of articulate and explain to the family mm -hmm. what are the changes that they're making and why yeah. so we feel it's quite important to kind of have that established that it's it is not just the individual it's about them and their family and friends too but it's also i think from that very first meeting where i where i actually saw you you actually embodied that from from day one you actually brought your daughter yes. with you yes and uh, you said i think a little while later to me that it was quite important for um families uh, for the families that ensue from uh, from a new muslim being married mm. that those children are born in the faith yeah. that they don't necessarily know where the the new the, the revert parent uh, is coming from oh, okay. um and so it helps to actually give them that understanding yeah. as well there's not something that that they were born with that they came to and it was a journey that they mm. they actually went on to to reach uh, to reach that this Destination. And it sounds like a very holistic transitional mm. process, which mm. is quite healthy overall mm. because everything is being explained in such a subtle, not... Um yeah, there's no lovely, judgment. Yeah, yeah there's no, no judgment in our group. It's a very safe space that mm. we try to foster. And um, there's absolutely no judgment because people are at different parts of their journey. We've mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. some, um, what you would call new Muslims, mm -hmm. but they've actually been Muslim for 20 odd years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. and then we've also got really brand new people who've only taken Shahada mm -hmm. within the last few months. So we've got a, a lot of all sorts at, mm -hmm. at our group. So is this mm -hmm. specifically for just like um, Muslims who are, are new to Islam? Because you've just mentioned somebody like who's been Muslim for mm. 20 years mm. but mm. has like decided to come to the group and is it specifically for people who are not culturally uh, sorry let me start that again <laughs> um, can sort of Muslims who are who are born into the faith attend this group? Yeah, we have had some interest. We I mean, we, yeah, we we are pro obviously aimed at new Muslims, yeah. but we have had events where we've had it open because mm. we want people to bring their family and mm. friends, and we've also trying to promote the group because. Mm. Um, you know, we don't actually pay for any promotion. The most, no. the most promotion we've got actually is probably via the this radio. Um, 
opportunities yes. and things like that so we don't we haven't had a lot of promotion we've got a facebook page but um yeah we have had people want to come along and and mm. have taken an interest especially mm. as we've had some really great guest speakers we've mm-hmm. had some really fantastic support so we've had people like lauren booth who's quite a a prominent reva come along and and she's spoken at both our an iftar event and yes. uh, she's done also a book signing for us right. and we've also had people like hamza tortoise as well mm-hmm. and i mean he's amazing mm-hmm. he's gone international with his whole uh thing that he's trying to do with his whole dawa project so mm-hmm. we've got we've had some really amazing people and i think that's why we've got kind of a bit more of a universal appeal. Yeah. The interesting thing about it is as well is that um, as, as Muslims, we are ex- we are required to seek knowledge mm-hmm. and to grow in our faith. And therefore, uh, we are actually offering uh, something that uh, actually puts us, um, couches us confidently within the wider Muslim community, whereby we are not a minority within a minority, but we are actively part of the Muslim community community that we are there as equals and we also have a voice Mm -hmm. and we have something to contribute Uh, and the fact that that we get uh, heritage Muslims uh, wanting to come to the event is because we are offering um, topics that are being discussed that is of interest to the Muslim community um, at large and not just to new Muslims. And how can people get in touch with you if they want to, if there are a revert to um islam um i i'm gonna step back a little bit i used to get confused by the term convert Mm -hmm. and revert and it's like what is the correct term there is no it's semantics okay yeah yeah. there is no correct term and the only reason we didn't call it convert is because convert can apply to any religion right okay Mm -hmm. so whereas revert does seem to be specifically to islam because of the concept that we're all born in a state of islam Mm -hmm. and that from our um surroundings and our upbringing we might move away from islam and that's why it's called revert as in revert back to your original Ah, natural state Mm -hmm. but it is semantics Uh uh-huh and sometimes if semantics can be so confusing yeah. and, and this is what we're going to talk to you about as well because I know you guys have got a great sense of humor because Muslims are allowed to have a laugh um, which uh, I know we can do is it's like what not to say to a revert um, to Islam and I know you got we had a bit of a giggle about this so we're going to find out a little bit more about mm-hmm. that but how can people get in contact with you yeah, okay um, what are the Facebook pages so forth? so we have an email address so if people want to get in touch or, or even a t- telephone us so our email address is lutonrevertgroup at gmail.com. We also do have a dedicated phone number, which is 07846 242645. Um, but the way I find that most people like to keep in touch with us and follow us is via Facebook. Mm-hmm. So we have lots of uh, heritage Muslims following us on Facebook as well as the new Muslims. And that we keep that updated quite regularly about yes. when we're meeting. We try to meet at least once a month mm-hmm. um, where we will put on some social time. We usually yeah. structure our meetings over for two or three hours so that we can actually have a social space as well mm-hmm. so we'll have time to get to know each other um, as well as having some kind of part of it which it might be an academic or or, or yes. learning of some sort and uh, you are the responsible one this is why you're the chairperson she's the responsible one she's the one that updates the facebook page and keeps all the practical side of things Mm. well um, you know and you'll be sharing a lot of this information on the um welcome to islam show which is on the sunday because you guys will be the regular voices on that show which is absolutely awesome Inshallah. inshallah so um We've also got Salma in the studio too, and she works for the Luton Food Bank. Um, she's sharing with us two projects. One is the Colour Run, Colour Fun Run, and the other one is an after- afternoon tea um, in celebration of mothers and the support mothers provide to us overall. Um, Salma, you've just been listening to Kerry and Rosa talking about the um, the Luton Revert Group and, and and your thoughts on that. Is there any is there any way you can link your work with the work that they're doing? Because I understand there's lots of projects that you guys like to get mm-hmm. your community group involved in. Yes, too. Oh, yeah, I mean they can come as a social to sorry the social event can be coming to our fundraising events. Yeah, I mean certainly there's we like to encourage new Muslims to be part of the community mm-hmm. and we also like them to be active right. um, and socially aware mm-hmm. so definitely food bank is something that you know we could dif- link up with mm-hmm. and we could even have you as a guest speaker and mm-hmm. we could do certain, yeah, yeah yeah just to get more awareness and uh, yeah inshallah I think that would be great fun 
Now, this is what this show is about. It's actually making those connections and those collaborations and bringing people together, folks. You are listening to Inspire Fan, the Urban Cube show, and the repeat of the show this evening will be at 8 p.m. You can catch all the action on Facebook Live right now. We have three tremendous local ladies in the studio, and we also have Pecan Pie. Yes, Pecan Pie, <laughs> and it was glorious, honestly. Whilst Kerry was speaking, I was munching away. Thank you for that, Kerry. Um, and uh, Rosa is in the studio, Kerry's in the studio, and so is Selma. If you have any questions, please, please please feel free to uh, throw them over to us on 07779481822. Just before the break, um, and before we tucked into pecan pie, I was, um, I threw over a kind of a headline from a article that I came across, which had said France um, is to replace the words mother and father with parent one and parent two. Now, I don't know whether this is actually a true story or a spoof story. Fake now, news. I, so <laughs> do you think it's spoof or do you think it's true? I think it's crazy enough to be true. Yeah. It's crazy enough to be with the French. I actually yeah. have a colleague who's French. I can strongly advocate for the fact that it's quite possibly true. Really? Mm. They wow. just, uh, they just, um, I think it's that they, from little history lesson, but obviously once they went through the French Revolution uh -huh. and they they actually insisted on doing away with all religion, okay. all the churches at the time became a center of knowledge. Mm -hmm. They actually repurposed all churches uh, in France during the French Revolution to become centers of knowledge and philosophy and uh, uh, learning. From that point of view, that's when the encyclopedia first was was uh, a, a thought of as a as a concept. So it wouldn't surprise me. Really, mm. Salma, your thoughts? Do you think that's uh, that story where I picked up on? Uh, is it true or is it false? Now, the story, once again, and um, the headline is France to replace the words mother and father with parent one and parent two. I think crazy enough, it, it is true. I think it could be true as well. Really? Gosh. Yeah, because the way things are going now and uh -huh. it's politically going, correct. Yeah, without going into it. I think we we're just trying so hard mm. always to be right and correct. Uh -huh. And I don't know, are we going to have a confused generation? What, what's going to happen? I don't know. Well, my kids are confused. because Well, they're not actually, because I, I number them. One, child one, <laughs> child two, child three, four, five and six. And they've kind of got used to that now. <laughs> is this so you don't have to remember the names? Yes. And don't even, <laughs> let's not even go down to date of birth. Because You're like, them down, yeah? Uh, no, I just make well, sure, every child, make sure you remember it. Well, uh, if we look at... Um, me yeah. being me, I kind of go to Google and obviously it, I just have to find it. And it is in the Telegraph. Wow, so, so it must is. be true. We're not talking. <laughs> we're not, <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> well, you know, if we avoid other, and in the, on the independence as well. So, and a French newspaper. Do you want me to read the, the French article itself from Le Monde? Or? Oh, you're going to do it in French? Well, it is. There. Are we going to get an expert translation too? Wow. Mm, well, in Newtonian. So, Go for it. <laughs> I want to hear this. Well, it says parents one, parent two, life and death of an of a controversial idea of the project uh, from a, a particular law called Law Blanquet. Mm. Uh, I'd have to take the time to read this, but uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like it is this political correctness, as in because you might have board. parents that might be two dads or two okay. mums. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't want to label anyone. Right. So it's this whole label thing, isn't it? And that is part of the article. I did read that, that this is one of the reasons to kind of just, uh, it's being more politically correct. Yeah. But are we, um, yeah, intriguing, intriguing. So that was one of the stories this morning that we... Can, um, if, I could, if I just yeah, may, yeah, though, for, for myself, mm -hmm. I think that actually what they're causing is they're causing more issues where, for instance, where the, what about a family where there's only a parent? Mm -hmm. One then, 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 then is the child. Then is the child. Then is the child going to school and saying, "Parents evening," and it's like, uh, "This is parent one. This is parent two. There's some children, uh -huh. and other children will say, "Oh, this is only parent one." Or is it parent and, three? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or you know, <laughs> oh, it's just parent two and three because oh, parent yes, one that's is that like parent. Oh, yes, yes. You've got four, five as well. well Gosh, exactly. the numbers don't stop. Exactly just, the point. It is confusing. Yeah. But it's singling out the children and making them still feel different, even mm. within the effort of making them the same. Right. They're mm. still making them feel different oh. where they don't have the same parent one and parent two that everybody else has got. They've got parent one only 
that will make them different. Folks, if you've just tuned in, the conversation this morning with our lovely parents mm-hmm. in the studio is um, France has um, launched. I, I think it's it's um, it's a pilot. Isn't it? It's been pilot. created. Um, the the fact that uh, they are actually. Replacing the term mother and father with parent one and parent two, is that something that you agree with? Um, uh, should it happen? Is it being politically correct overboard? I don't know. You need to tell me on 07779481822. Now, in the studio, we are joined by three very remarkable mummies um, <laughs> who are joining me this morning. We're talking about a number of things from, we're going to be talking about sci fi. I'm going to be talking about gaming. Yes, people, moms can game too, you know. Um, We've also talked about colour, fun run and cake. We've had live cake eating in the studio. Pecan pie extraordinaire. I think we've set a precedence now. Oh, my goodness. It's just going to have to be cake every time. Do you know what? Guess what? It normally that is. Might, yeah. But this oh, is the first good. time we've had a home-baked cake. Salma, you know, I've always liked mm. donuts and, and cakes and biscuits. Mm-hmm. You can't come onto this show without a cake. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. But thank you, Rosa. So it's something for your show as well. Something yeah, for your yeah. show. So you've you got to bake pie when we do it on that side. <laughs> yeah. You and, haven't seen my, my family recipe lemon cake. Oh, yeah. oh, oh no, now that you've done it. <laughs> family hashtag inverted commas. Um, yeah, she calls it the family cake. Now, I'm going to ask you ladies, um, what do, in, in reference to this uh, this story that we've just talked about about France nay, replacing mother and father with parent one or parent two what do your children actually call you at home is there is there a particular name that they call you no, no just mom, mom or mom mom, mom. yeah or oh, mummy they mommy. say mummy oh. then it becomes mom as they get become teenagers okay so what about oh, you that, that particular mom is the one that when you're walking through the shopping center oh, and you hear it in exactly that tone <laughs> and you actually stop and you turn around for a minute is that my child yeah <laughs> I because actually it's exactly that tone yeah, that's I used know. and you just recognize it it's, it's conditioned yeah, you, you stop have to turn like, around Whoop. I actually can't recognise when my children call me which one it is. Oh. Because their voices sound a bit similar. Oh, right. So I can't figure out if it's my son or daughter. Oh, bless you, bless you. I've had some uh, mother lately. It's when they want mother. something serious. Ooh. It's like mother. Yes, me yeah. too. I get that. I like that. It's very Victorian. I quite like, I like um, no, my daughter calls me madre, oh, madre, madre. So it's, which okay. is the same, it's just, uh-huh. but it's, and I quite like that as well. Okay, and um, it's madre because of Italian? It's the Italian, Italian. For, for mother. Yeah. Wonderful, uh-huh. wonderful. Yeah, I think my son started calling me mater, which I think it might be a Latin. Mater, oh, mater yeah, is mother. Yeah, Latin influence. I don't think he must have got that from school. He's learning French and he's learning, I don't know. Yeah, so that's oh, a new one as well. He started mm. calling me that. Oh, it uh, sounds awfully public school, doesn't it? Oh, does it? Oh, that's good. What about you? Mata. Amma? Ami? No, they call, my daughter watches a series called Ertugel, so she calls me Anna. Oh, <laughs> she does it. That's she amazing. Does, yeah, so she just says when she tries to be nice to me, like, Anna, Anna. And she does the whole thing of the kiss. Oh, oh so I love it, I love it. <laughs> Folks, um... <laughs> Another article that I've come across, the Americans are complaining that Peppa Pig is influencing their children to speak English. <laughs> oh, <laughs> British English. Um, we'll talk about that straight after the break, but we're going to say goodbye to Salma because she's Bye heading off to the food bank. Gone. But we're still oh, joined Salma. by Rosa and uh, Kerry. Join me straight after the break for some more quirky conversations on the Urban Cube. Where else? Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to an Inspire FM podcast, making available our popular programmes from our daily broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum. It is 11 o'clock exactly, Monday, 25th of February, and you're listening to me, Shamaiza, taking you all the way up to 12 o'clock on Where Else is the Urban Cube. Uh, now, on today's show, we've had some creative chaos in the studio by some very remarkable local ladies. They were three, but now they're two, because Salma from the local uh, Luton Food Bank has had to go back to work, mashallah. So thank you very much, Salma, this morning, giving us your time and also sharing with us uh, the remarkable work that has been done with the Luton Food Bank. Now, the Luton Food Bank, um, as always, 
the journey um, does never st is, doesn't stop. Their duty doesn't stop because they still are families that are very much needy, and it seems to be increasing. So, two of the projects that they're doing is one is the Color Fun Run, which I've had the pleasure of participating. I think when it was launched a couple of years ago, and the other project is the um, afternoon tea with um, mum. So, if you're interested in participating, fundraising, or getting involved please do go to the Luton Food Bank page we'll give you further details about that very shortly now um, in the show on the show this morning I'm also joined by two very very awesome ladies who are going to be regular voices on the Sunday uh, show which is the welcome to um, Islam show which will be aired on uh, Inspire FM every Sunday we, I am joined by no other than uh, Kerry Manan and Rosa Gala assalamu alaikum ladies wa alaikum assalam Thank you so very much for staying with me and keeping me in entertained and hopefully our listeners this morning as well. It's been really quite fascinating, um, your journey to Islam as well, which we're going to find out a little bit more mm -hmm. about. Now, you're also uh, behind the very, very much needed Luton Revert Group, which was launched two years ago. You're part of the management committee as well as the... Um, chair uh of this group which mashallah is is i understand growing in numbers carrie yeah um we're steadily increasing and we're always getting every time we have a meeting we more or less get a new phase we get people dipping mm. in and out mm, mm. Uh, we've got people as well coming from even outside of luton because you know i think what we offer is quite unique mm -hmm. and people are interested to come yeah. along and hear our guest speakers and to come and meet us mm -hmm. so um yeah, it, we've been known. We've been known to provide. I think, well, not personally because you wouldn't see me behind the steering wheel. I would not be safe uh, for anybody. But uh, I've seen some of us actually engaging in, uh, you know, providing the, the the transport for people coming from outside oh, of, of of Luton, wanted mm -hmm. to attend the meeting, but not having, you know, being a new Muslim somewhere out in a village, yeah. and not not having the, the the means to actually come along, and uh, so that's being provided as well. Um, you, you mentioned commute, Rosa, and yeah. the reason why I know your work is because you are a creative writer, Marshall. I've read your poetry, I've seen you perform mm. um, in, in Luton as part of the Gullum um, Poetry yes. Network, which was mm. which was astounding, I, mu I must add. But also um, my, your tales of your commute and being the only hijabi in the office. Which I am. Uh, which you are. <laughs> and just reading about those really like interesting um, experiences that you have are just remarkable. Um, has, you know, why are you sharing this information why, uh, um, on, on social media? Because, because the life of uh, the life of uh, of uh, a new Muslim is no different than any other heritage Muslim. Um, we all have similar experiences, and we lead we lead normal lives, which means that we have weird and wonderful things happening to us too. Um, and also from the point of view of a new, new Muslim, it's about breaking down those barriers. It's about having the courage to the courage to ask, can I please have a prayer room? Right. Or can I have a space to pray? Mm -hmm. And actually them going to, to, to delivering to to the extreme whereby they actually build you one. Yeah, Marshallah, where she works, she works for a very well-known construction company mm -hmm. and she works at one of their offices in London. Mm -hmm. And when she said to them, because bless her, what she was doing before was like playing in a stairwell oh, wow. or sometimes she was like spending a whole lunch hour just yeah. trying to get to a masjid that's like mm -hmm. 15, 20 minutes away. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she then said, you know what, I'm just going to ask them. I'm just going to say I need to pray and can you provide something? And then they provide you like a specially built pod, didn't they? Yes, oh. it's not soundproof, but it's... Uh, Yes, but it's the effort got, was made yeah, because you yeah. asked, and if you don't ask, you won't know, right? Yeah, no, you don't ask, don't get. I was yeah. so I was so afraid to ask because wow. you, you some even if they tell you the company is all inclusive mm. and they saw so cross sectional and uh, you know it's so all singing, all dancing, ticking all the boxes, mm. um, you don't realize how much they actually mean it mm. until they actually you ask. And uh, so yes, so I have a, I have a, a space to go and pray. It's quite cool. It was mm. great fun. Actually, myself and a brother, and actually using three different mobile phones and Kibla apps to actually make sure that the sign for the Kibla was out in the right place. Wow. So uh, it was co it was a committed decision. Oh, <laughs> oh, it went. This is this is awesome. <laughs> so how's their relationship and understanding with you as the only hijabi in the office um, developed or progressed um, from? It, 
it's with familiarity. Familiarity becomes that all of a sudden they don't see the hijab as separate from you, okay. that they see hijab as part of you you as, as a human being and therefore they don't notice it so much anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, at the beginning it was quite interesting, the responses. Um, you did actually get misrecognised, right? <laughs> I did, I did. There was, a, there was a brother who actually worked in one of the other divisions and he kind of spotted me in the breakout lunch area and he walked up to me and you know assalamu alaikum and uh, you know wa alaikum assalam and kind of say oh when did you join <laughs> and i looked at him and i went i've been here for years that's my chair over there I, and i didn't actually say that i kind of put says oh i he goes where do you sit and i went oh i sit over there and he went you sit over there what happened to rosa <laughs> and then he kind of went Oh. oh, and a penny dropped that it was actually <laughs> me. And I thought to myself, major kudos to the brother who actually all this time had been walking past my desk and lowering his gaze because obviously <laughs> he was being modest. Oh. And now all of a sudden I'm wearing hijab, so he takes notice. Okay, <laughs> interesting, intriguing. Now, how fascinating is that story? But Rosa, what faith did you follow prior to becoming um, Muslim? I was what would be termed a, a Roman Catholic, uh-huh. uh, Italian born and raised, so it's pretty much a given that you it, likely that if you are um, Italian of birth and heritage that you must also be a Roman Catholic mm-hmm. so um, I came from that to uh, fully practicing uh, in my faith and in my local church from that to to Islam so and how uh, did that transition come about what was it that was mm-hmm. it Luton that brought Islam no, to you no because I, I had lived here for a, a good about Eight, 20 years before right. uh, before I embraced Islam. So it wasn't mm-hmm. Luton itself. And I'm sorry to say it wasn't the local community either. It was just simply um, that it wasn't for me. Right. And that's, that's how it, I felt at the time. So what has it brought to you being Muslim now, from being Roman Catholic to being Muslim? It's given me a sense of balance and it's okay. resented me. It's also... Uh, Re, it's actually given me back to myself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because um, I kind of lost the, my sense of identity and who I was. And the kind of nice Rosa that used to be nice so many years ago, um, living in a country where you kind of learn to play your cards too close to your chest and you don't reveal much of yourself. Mm-hmm. The Brits are very, very reserved. Stiff up a lip, stereotype. Uh-huh. And it, but but it, I've seen that time okay. and time again. Whilst in Italy, you get, you get surplus information. Right. Uh-huh. It's not just me. Okay. I can promise you, it's not just me. <laughs> I had uh, I was given an induction to a new PA on Friday. She happens to be of Italian heritage, born and uh, born and raised in Italy, but it's been here a long time, and. Uh, she called me to say that she was running late and she gave me a two minute explanation about why she was running late. Oh, and I said to her, don't worry, I'm also running late. And I gave her a two minute explanation of why I was running late. <laughs> Did you blog this? No, I haven't got you need to blog it yet. this because this is great. How can we access your blog? Because it's quite meaningful. It's, you know, how would you describe this blog of yours? Uh, it's reflective. Uh-huh. It's uh, It can be anything from uh, current uh, topics. Uh-huh. Uh, so I actually Actually, wax lyrical about Brexit. Okay. We're not going to mention that word. Let's not go there. Uh, <laughs> let's just mention pecan pie instead. <laughs> yes. Um, so there's that. There's an element about uh, you know topics that are particularly maybe Islamic. So from the point of view of giving to charity, right. uh, of uh, being have the social responsibility of being in a wider community. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked about hijab. If you read my hijab blog about what it was like when I first started wearing hijab at work. You will laugh yourself silly. You did um, a gardening one recently, right? It was, technically, it's yeah, gardening. You called it gardening. gardening yeah, yeah, but it was I like symbolic. To, I like to give it. If you were to read a list of the ten things not to do with your blog in order for it to be successful, you'll find that I do all of those. <laughs> So, and you are you would like to become an author? Um, I really see that you you are actually making your way there. If you were to author yeah. a book, what would it be about? It would be a dystopian novel. Um, mm. I actually have a couple of projects I'm working on uh-huh. uh, at the minute. I uh, am um, the kind of person that would probably it has to be close enough to be plausible, mm-hmm. and uh, also it's about having. My main character, in the the one I'm I'm working on at the minute, is uh, a Muslim woman. Mm-hmm. 
has but to be the protagonist but, has to be a Muslim woman but, and she has to be fierce. Yes, <laughs> and she is. She, she is because she she is going to the rescue. Cool. I'm and, not giving more away, and this but is really she interesting is. interesting because I did come up, um, something came up on my feed by, um, she's a director, an award-winning director who's actually working on a project where she's actually calling out for superwoman, you know, super Muslim hero women mm-hmm. as the protagonist in this film, feature film, I think that's mm. going to be coming out. So, hmm, intriguing. Oh, that's interesting. But I can't reveal too much because... No. Um, she will give me the the info when it's a little bit more. Oh, keep oh, us updated yeah, on that. Thank you to do so. So how awesome is that? Now, folks, if you've just tuned in, you're listening to the Urban Cube. It's eleven minutes past eleven exactly, and um, you, I'm joined by two tremendous local ladies in the studio this morning, and voices that you're going to be hearing quite a lot on Sundays because they are uh, going to be participating as the presenters of the Welcome to Islam show. Is no other than Kerry Manan and. Rosa Gala. Hello again, ladies. Hello. I have to do that intro. intro. So it's Assalamu alaikum again. Wa alaikum assalam. The show today is a celebration of everything and anything. We've been talking pecan pie. Um, we've the also, highlight. Which was. <laughs> There's super, more. Oh gosh, is there? There's more. Oh yeah. my goodness. I might you just get at least you. another slice. I, oh, thank you. Very, very generous on this show. Now, there's actually a National Pecan Pie Day. There was. I should have called you on that day, but it doesn't matter, we can have it every day. Um, The show today is, we're just marking a lot of interesting um, stories. Um, We've also talked about the food bank with Salma. Um, There is a colour fun run that's happening and also a mother's afternoon tea, which is to help fundraise for the local food bank. Um, On today's show, we're also uh, exploring some of the current news stories that are happening. And um, I'm looking at calming effects, things to calm us. And one of the stories is um, that I picked up was the effects of sewing can help people express and calm themselves. So ladies, are you into sewing? I know you're into baking, but sewing? Yeah, no, sewing's not something I'm really into. I have dabbled in the past, Uh like you do when you're younger and you're kind of trying all kinds of things. I have knitted. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I've I tried to knit a scarf, and that was about as far as I get. You know where you can like just do like the one or two stitch, but you know like the fancy stuff. I couldn't do that, oh. so I was able to do a very long scarf, which my mum still has, but she didn't act. It was that good. She didn't actually know that it was a hand knitted scarf. Oh, she just really? found it Amazing. in the closet and started wearing. It. I was like, I recognise that scarf. I knitted that when I was like about seventeen. Oh wow! So she's had it all this time, which is quite funny. And I also did some sewing. When my nephew was born, mm-hmm. uh, about uh, he's coming, he, he's eight now. So when he mm. was born, um, I just wanted to do, because he was precious, I just wanted to do something. And I couldn't think what. And I thought, you know how people always give cuddly toys, but I wanted to do something a bit more personal. So I actually sat. And and this time I had my young children, so I wasn't working at the time. So I actually mm-hmm. sat and sewed, from, bought one of these kits online. Oh, and wow. I sewed this teddy bear it took hours oh, wow. but it's one of these lovely ones where it's all fluffy and it's got articulated arms and legs oh, check you yeah and i even Amazing. managed to sew his initial onto his tum on no onto his paw oh yeah and oh. um i'm hoping he still has it I even hope though so eight years sure. later. his name uh, he might he's jamie jamie <laughs> yeah. do you still have that teddy <laughs> Auntie Carrie wants to know. Oh, he better do. He better do. Because oh. it took so many hours. But other than that, I can't say that I'm a, a regular sewer or, or uh-huh. knitter. Now, you seem to be a lady of all talents, extraordinaire. <laughs> so Not you can this. bake <laughs> delicious pies. What about sewing? Are you a dumb <laughs> hand with the sewing needle? Not this. Not, Not this. this. I can stitch a button on. Uh-huh. But yeah. to my, the, I remember one thing. Do you, you have you ever come across when your child tells you with a space of like two days to go? Oh, by the way, I have this project to do and I have to turn <laughs> it in, or I have to go on this school trip. And by the way, I need a Tudor outfit put together. <laughs> yes, and I'm, I'm looking there. at this and I'm going. <laughs> Oh shoot! What am I going to do? So yeah. you get creative yeah. and you start putting, you know, different Sticking things together. Plastic. Uh, no, no? Like, I got a waistcoat. I turned it inside out so they will look be a little bit rougher. I took the buttons off. I actually did. I used some twine to actually do the cross thread at the front. Check uh, her out. I actually, I think they give us a template for the little cap for the uh-huh. little maiden girl you know so I did that as well I actually made everything and I worked really hard to get this you know to have a sort of almost genuine outfit legit you know and then when I walked out to the school playground there were there were little girls wearing the equivalent of uh, medieval 
fairy princesses' oh. outfits that the parents clearly had gone and hired. I, and I was so put out by that. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I think it should be an effort made by the child with the support of their parents, Rosa. Oh. Um, and not, but unfortunately, it gets quite competitive. Oh, yeah. Parents don't have the time or the effort, or they just want their child to look the best, and they will order online. And it just doesn't seem just takes it away from and me a little bit. And not just at schools. It's like crazy that they'll just come out with all sorts of weird things my kids recently had a thing where they had mexican day and they were supposed to like wear sombreros and ponchos i was like i am not going out and buying a sombrero and poncho because when are they ever going to wear that again <laughs> unless it's done <laughs> annually that have mexican no, day it was a one-off unlikely and they just tasted some nachos and things at school but it's like, it, seriously you have nachos at home on I a know. weekend or movie nights so please like, what, what are they thinking and yet they were there were all these kids who turned up wow. with the sombreros apart you know from your child did? I'm such a cheat. Okay, go on, tell but us. This is my always my go to okay. thing face paint. Oh. So okay. I painted him, you know. <laughs> The handlebar was stuck. Oh, he got one of those so to wear to school. Cool. And that's all he needed to do. <laughs> yeah. That was cheap and easy and yeah. very effective. That's See? always my go-to thing when the kids Fantastic. have got to dress up because then you've got it in there, in your in your drawer somewhere and you haven't got a Fantastic. Paint well, that is Carrie's tip, guys. Always have face paint when it comes to these like non-uniform days, which do cost an arm yes. and a leg. Yes, they do. They do. They seem to pop up every week. Mm -hmm. World um, Book Day is coming up oh, soon. Oh, gosh. Isn't yes. it? Beginning of March, March 3rd or something yes. like that. So what are the plans, ladies? Have the children already? Have you pre-planned? No. Have you got a little bit It'll be face paint again. Face, face paint. My, my, my little girl is taller than me now and she's not in school anymore. So she doesn't give, you know, she doesn't put me through the ringer with oh, those things I, I anymore. I see the delight in your eyes. Your glasses are glistening with delight and happiness <laughs> because you're not having to go through that thing. traumatic process I know. of dressing your child. Have you ever blogged about that? Is no, that a story that you but there is, no, but there is light. I can tell you now uh -huh. with you, with, with anybody who's got children, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Wonderful. <laughs> Eventually Wonderful. they finish school. Inshallah. 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 Uh, and they can buy their own because they'll have a part-time job as well by then. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Yeah. If they still carry on dressing up. Yeah. Um, what, um, folks, if you've just tuned in, you are listening to the Creative Chaos somewhere else. It's the Urban Cube, mashallah, with innovative, quirky conversations with uh, tremendous guests. And I'm super, super pleased to have guests from locally joining me in the studio this morning. Now, one of the, the things that we talked about this morning was an article that I came across, which I understand from Rosa has ha has been picked up by the national press mm -hmm. across the country, is the fact that France is actually changing um, the title of mother and father to parent one and parent two. Now, um, we did ask you guys to kind of get involved with the conversation. If you'd like to give your opinions on this, then it's 07779481822. But Matloub, um, her brother Matloub has come, um, got in touch and he says, Salam, is mum number one or two? Interesting point. Is mum number one or two? So where does mum fall into this? Um, as is it number one or number two? Thank you for that, Matloub. And thank you for tuning in to the show this morning. Because yeah, no one wants to be parent number two, do they? No. Competitive. I call parent one for mum. Cool. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, because bum carries the baby inside mm -hmm. her for uh, for those months, therefore she has uh, um, advanced practice into being a she's parent. Superhero. Yeah, exactly. The points, you know, they just uh, she's mm -hmm. she's mum from a lot. You know, she's she's exercising her parental skills mm -hmm. by carrying the baby from from word go. Mm -hmm. What does that so do? So mum is clearly number history. one. Um, Carrie. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. number one. Has to be. Because what's the first thing on the kids' lips whenever they want anything? Mum. Mum, yes. <laughs> and, and we did ask, um, I asked you guys, what, how do you, you know, what do your children call you? And we had um, some very interesting uh, mm -hmm. versions. We've got, obviously, the Italian way of... She calls uh, me madre, madre. madre. And uh, it is, you know, in a respectful way is when she needs something mm. and, and she asks nicely. Um, she always asks nicely, but, you know, I need to say that just in case she listens later. <laughs> 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 but otherwise, generally, it's mum. Uh -huh. And that's the you question know. I'm asking you guys as well. What do you, if your children need something from you, is there a different way they kind of... Uh, uh, anything additions to the title of mother or father? Um, Kerry, is there anything specific that your children um, add on to? No, I don't think so. Um, when my children were born, my husband tried to get them because they call their dad because he's uh, from a Bengali descent. Mm -hmm. So they call him Abba, not dad. Mm -hmm. 
um, and he wanted them to call me Amma, but I was just like, no, that's just too weird for me because that's not my yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm, okay. mm-hmm. you know, I've always called my yeah. mum mum, so yeah. they should call me mum, not Amma. That's like that's what I call my mother-in-law. <laughs> right, right. So um, no, I, but no, they just call me mum. Did they ever go through a phase of calling you by your first name? Because they have heard it kind of it can happen with some mm. with some in some families with the parents where you know the dad will call the mum. No, because by the they first won't name. ever hear their dad call me by name. Uh huh. There's a cultural thing where they don't call each other by names. Like I'd be called Naima's mum. Oh, interesting. That's a yeah. That's quite old school. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he, he doesn't nice. he doesn't often call me by my name. So they wouldn't have heard my name that often. Okay. So. Okay. Um, one question, uh, the ladies in the studio, the voices that you're hearing right now, the wonderful company that they are giving me this morning are Carrie and uh, Rosa, and they're going to be regular fo- uh, voices because they're part of the show, which is uh, Welcome to Islam show, which is going to be, which is airing already on Sundays. Now, you the ladies have also founded and are actively involved with the Luton Revert Group, which as was launched two years two years ago, with the premises to kind of provide support to new Muslims mm-hmm. and also, mashallah, to Muslims that Rosa describes as heritage Muslims, yes. which I find quite a nice little interesting it- um it's not so unusual. If you think about mm. it, often you'll have, uh, you get um, river, new Muslims mm. that will marry new Muslims. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've come across that. But you also have come across new Muslims that marry that marry heritage Muslims. Right. Now, weekends, when you have couples that work all week and they, they, are, they don't see each other very much mm. during the week and with the children going to bed early, uh, you know, for school and so on, you don't have a lot of family time. So s- weekends when we normally have our meetings are quite precious time. Mm. So we cannot say to a new Muslim, please come to our meeting, but it's only for you yeah. and yeah. not your, your spouse and yeah. not your children. So this way we invite them along and it's a two-prong attack. We yes. promote the family cohesion. Mm-hmm. which is really important and central in Islam, but also that we provide that learning opportunity, which means that also um, heritage Muslims who might uh, kind of got busy with their life and not have so much time to seek knowledge, this is an opportunity for them to deepen mm-hmm. the, their understanding of their faith too. So the way we look at it, we are being, you know, totally... Um, empathetic and also holistic in this transitional phase one Mm -hmm. question i i i'm quite intrigued by is what is you know what are the myths associated with um when you you, when when you come to islam and things that you've got to kind of change like for example names i always noticed that a lot of names you've got to drop your name that you had um in uh before you became a revert to islam yeah are you supposed to do that? No. 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 It's only if your name actually means something bad Islamically, okay. then you're encouraged to change your what name. What does Harry mean then? It doesn't mean anything. Okay. Well, I mean, it's it's got an Irish history okay. to it, so there might be a, possibly a Gaelic meaning right. or Welsh meaning associated it's with that. It's a county in Ireland, but, isn't yeah, it's it? it's a county so, in Ireland. Um, <laughs> geographically, yeah. you don't but think it's anything it bad about that. It doesn't mean that. anything. Oh, yeah, and <laughs> for, me, for me, it was actually very important for me to keep my name. Mm. And, mm. and I'm not trying to pl- uh, play down the sisters or brothers who decide to change the name that's totally their prerogative Mm -hmm. but for me um my name is my identity Mm -hmm. and I just feel like for me that would have been just one step too much to kind of say to my mom and dad well you gave me a lovely name that you chose you brought me up you birthed me brought me up and did everything Mm -hmm. that good parents do but actually now I'm going to turn my back on that and choose my own name I think you know people who go through deed poll you know and change their name to these crazy names you know whatever I just find that a little bit odd so for me personally, mm. I feel like I am Kerry. I've always been Kerry, you know, and I've changed my name since I've become married. So my surname is now an Islamic name, which is okay. the Manan. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I don't, I think it would just be a bit odd mm. to suddenly change name. And it's, you do get these people who now have got dual names. So to some people, they're still known as their English name. Right. And um, then when they're with their Muslim brothers and sisters, then they're called their new Muslim name. It's and a bit so odd. that's something so, that is quite uh, refreshing for Muslims that come in, the Revet Muslims in your group to, to kind of get those questions that they've faithful and, and asking. And not just and that, more lots of opinion, answer. you know, because Islam is about um, balance and, you know, being the opportunity to have difference. Mm. So, mm-hmm. you know, if somebody's come into Islam and only had one um, source of knowledge, when they come to our group, now they've got 
a wealth of experience mm. and knowledge that they can tap into. And I think that's quite important to get yeah. balance within mm. your religion. Now we're heading off to the final break of the show. Uh, it is 11.25 and after the show we're going to be catching up with some more quirky snippets and getting the view of our guests on the show. So don't go away. You can grab yourself another slice of pecan pie, Rosa, and <laughs> join you straight after this. Assalamu alaikum. From the heart of Bedfordshire in Luton, this is Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum and a very, very hearty good morning to you. It is 11.30 exactly and um, you are listening to Shamiza taking all the way up to 12 o'clock on the Urban Cube show. It's the final half an hour of the show and it has gone by very, very quickly. I am in great company. I hope you're enjoying the voices on this morning's show and, and I hope they've been inspiring you and entertaining you with uh, quirky snippets and conversations that we've had and you can catch the repeat of the show at 8 p.m. this evening, inshallah. Also on Spotify and iTunes as well. It's all happening. Now we're on Facebook Live as well. And um, Kerry, I understand that we've had somebody watching us all the way from... From Bangladesh, yes. Yay. Yeah, but I just was checking in the break and so the brothers just said, I'm in Bangladesh. So we're, we're even getting awesome. international now. Awesome. Big, big shout out to Bangladesh. Yes, assalamu alaikum, brother. <laughs> That's absolutely alaykum. awesome. It's always a pleasure to know where people are listening in from mm. and just uh, to, to to find out somebody's listening in. Yeah, I can't actually see what his name is because it's written in Bengali. Oh, but you, you can actually <laughs> can speak you know Bengali, it? can't you? Um, I can speak, no, I can't really speak. Okay. I can speak a little bit because um, my mother-in-law um, occasionally lives with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's her English isn't great, so uh, we kind of have a mismatch between us um, of English and Bengali, which is, really cool. comes out with hilarious consequences. Um, well, I do think that's fascinating. I mean, last week was um, National Mother Tongue Day, and I do think languages <gasps> mm-hmm. um, are extremely important, in particular mm-hmm. Mother Tongue. Mm-hmm. Um, so, do you speak in Italian to your children, Rosa? My daughter, um, she understands some of it, but mm-hmm. because I went to I went back to work within the first year of her. Being being born um, there wasn't so much of the Italian being spoken Mm -hmm. she can understand more than she can um, that she can speak but she's getting better all the time Uh, the one thing I found is uh, when you speak your your mother when your mother tongue is actually the dialect of your area and that's a, 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 a is a romance language with its own grammar and its own structure mm-hmm. and then you have italian mm-hmm. which is the national language oh. uh, now you find yourself at a dine a, a, a lunch table with your with your family with your relatives when you go visit and i speak to my daughter in english and i speak to my cousin in italian and i speak to my aunt in the dialect and uh, you're holding this three-way conversation mm-hmm. and then you get tired and you turn around to your child and you speak to her in the dialect yeah. and then you speak to your cousin in english yeah, and it will mixed up and my daughter will say mom you know, you you're speaking to me in you know in Italian. You're speaking to your cousin in English. And she doesn't understand English, and I'm going, oh gosh. <laughs> but the thing is, I haven't even realised because wow. for my in my yeah. brain, I am actually having just one conversation. Mm, I'm switching without knowing. I don't yeah. even realise I'm switching. I could be kind of holding a conversation uh-huh. with different people and different languages and uh, to me it's just one conversation and why don't everybody understand each other? It's, I can understand you. You know, it's a superhero trait and on today's show we're also talking about superheroes. It's the universal translator, you know, yeah. from Star Trek. It's from Star Trek and the reason why we're doing that is because our ladies who are Carrie Manan and Rosa Gala not only are the um, ladies behind the Luton Revert group and the new voices or the regular voices on the Welcome to Islam show on Sundays on Inspire FM, but they're actual gamers. Yes, people, they don't just know how to sew and bake, but they can also <laughs> play games. And it's not, and it's, it's always an area that we seem to associate with guys, yeah, with yeah, not guys. normally women, especially not women in hijab. Yeah. Or niqab. Or niqab, yeah. but... In my game, there mm. is one lady in Ireland is a niqabi. I nearly got whiplash when I saw her, when I saw her, um, her photo on her profile and I went, she's, she's a niqabi. She's playing Star Trek timelines. She's a niqabi. So tell us, what is gaming? What is that? Um, 
it is about uh, taking a, a common interest in the one game and mm. you end up building, uh, becoming part of a community right. of such an array of people. Mm-hmm. And everybody comes from, they can come from diametrically opposite ends of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. You'll have the, uh, from a religious perspective, you have the token Muslim. Mm-hmm. And you'll have the um, the agnostic. You'll have the orthodox Greek. You'll have the you know um, the atheist. You'll have people or the Christian. Mm-hmm. You have them come from all different directions, and we all have something in common to share and to talk about and mm-hmm. to share our love and enthusiasm for and tips and kind of teaching and helping each other along. And it becomes this wider community that support each other and have that one thing in common. And then after that, all the differences fall by the road side you know you just kind of it it sort of seems to disappear you see each other as individuals and European world and yeah it happens wow wow and Carrie you're also somebody who's into gaming yeah well I'm of the generation where we've had this great transformation in technology so um, my father when I was younger used to buy me and my brother all the latest technology so we had and this is showing how old I am how now, lucky are you we wow. had a Vic 20 and a ZX Spectrum and a Commodore 64 these are all Crikey. like oh, wow. and in fact we even had the very first Atari which was the Pong <gasps> game wow. so we've always yeah so we've Only always had Pac-Man cards yeah no that's for my I've, pocket money I've had a lot of technology as I've grown yeah. up mm. so for me gaming has progressed so mm. much from that early day of Pong where you just got a right, bat ball right. Moving, you know, mm-hmm. um, to the Space amazing, invaders. amazing, yeah, and the amazing games that we've got today. They're really all immersive, and because mm-hmm. Rose is an online gamer, whereas I'm more of a console gamer. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm, and plus because bus- obviously being a busy mum, my kind of gaming, I have to dip in and out of it. So I do that Does too. It- I don't spend you know excessive amounts of time on there, but because I'm interactive in, I'm interacting with people mm-hmm. sometimes in in real time. It is truly a global 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 um thing yeah um so there are people um in my fleet she's she's the commander she's a commander (laughs) well well well. and uh, our latest recruit yesterday she's from she lives in rome so finally we've got a girl on board besides all the boys that i was actually leading because i was the one in charge of of all of them and it's like all these boys (laughs) doing what i tell them to do listening to me as the one person that will give them tips on the best way to uh, tackle an event you know i don't talk ships because there's such a thing as talking about under the bonnet stuff that i still don't uh-huh, get involved uh-huh. with she's and that's so into this game isn't yeah. she the passion and conviction and that brow <laughs> you know the, the, the kind of like determination to rule this fleet i'm loving it absolutely oh, yeah. loving it guys you've just tuned into the urban cube and you are believe mm-hmm. me for the first time we're talking gaming on the yeah. show with two very passionate gamers um mm-hmm who have been sharing a little bit of, of their journey in the world of gaming. Um, if you're a gamer, get in touch with these two <laughs> ladies. I mean, do you like part of the Loot and Revert group? Is there like a gaming section? Actually, no, we haven't come no, across that. We isn't. haven't done that. I actually do know, though, that one of the brothers, Abu Bakr, he's actually one of the guys who comes on Inspire oh. Radio quite mm-hmm. a lot. I know he mentioned that he came the other day, I came for a meeting, and he was wearing a Call of Duty, um, bl- like, bl- not blazer, like jacket thing. And I was like, oh, you're a gamer. I'm like, we, we oh, need to oh. talk. Yes, <laughs> we need to compare stats because uh, I'm also uh-huh. yeah into Call of Duty. Now which... I'm going to turn this around a little bit. As as parents, you're both parents. Mm-hmm. And the fact mm-hmm. that you know the gaming world, which makes it is it a lot easier for you to kind of look at the dangers as well associated with this, and also Definitely. talk to your children mm-hmm. about it mm-hmm. because we're seeing a real mm-hmm. increase in yeah. um, danger with the forums that are part of these yes. games. Because and that the fact- is something new. I mean, mm-hmm. gaming predominantly used to be in isolation in your oh, bed bedroom or wherever you used to play whereas now you are getting this very large online element where children are playing and it's also where you can access games Mm -hmm. used to be that it would only literally be on consoles or pc whereas now children are able to access it on your phone while you're not looking on their tablets Um, you know all you know different places to access i'll give you a typical instance um because i am uh, um obviously i'm the fearless and benevolent leader of my fleet Uh, (laughs) did you give yourself that title rosa i am the admiral i give myself any title i like (laughs) 
so, power to the lady. <laughs> but the one thing was that uh, in the game, the game, first of all, is a free app. Right. You don't have to pay for it. So you can download it on your mm. phone, on a smartphone, and you can play it. Any and there is no you have to declare to be a certain age mm-hmm. to access it because it is supposed to be a PC game but there is a universal chat uh, element to the game where you can actually anybody from any anywhere around the globe can actually go onto this chat and actually talk now new players will invar- invariably go in there and ask for advice and uh, that's any new players I actually recruited somebody on there and it turned out to my great shock that the the player was only 13 years old right. and it was a 13 year old boy in Utah and I thought to myself okay he's a casual player he'll never be one of those hardcore ones that really mm. wants to level up and really play it um so I thought I felt the responsibility. I thought, first of all, have you spoken to your parents and do you, do they know that you're playing this game? Mm-hmm. First of all, there's nothing like improper about the game. It's about the conversations that they might be having. Right. And you get all sorts of people on there. So you so, vet everyone that yes. is in your little yeah, like team. Abso- yes, no, absolutely. Uh-huh. Uh, so I, mean, I have a, a father of three with a fourth one on the way somewhere in Texas. There's uh, a guy in Wisconsin with his elderly mother. There is a, um, a, a retired truck her, mm-hmm. you know again in the states who's a grandpa you know so you get all sorts of but but with him i with this young lad i actually specifically felt the responsibility to hang on to him mm-hmm. number one and secondly tell him please do not go on that universal chat it's not for it's not right. for you now you're in my fleet you will not go there so do you think um there needs to be more education for parents really about the type of games that are out there because yeah. the, there's so much so many dangers associated i think We've children seen... are getting the education but possibly parents, parents aren't because yeah. and they yeah. a we lot can't of parents keep up. yeah a lot of parents actually don't actually appreciate what the children are doing yeah. they mm-hmm. just see they've engaged with something but they're mm-hmm. not really sure what it is mm-hmm. they're not understanding it so i think it's it is in some ways the parents need to be educated mm-hmm. and you know like i play with my children online so mm-hmm me and my son will play uh, you know around a call of duty together and it's it's quite hilarious because <laughs> you know it's like well he's he he actually puts his tag as you know son and i put my tag as mum, and we go around oh, that's and... so cute <laughs> oh that's so cute but i always associated call of duty with violence but it is quite violent because it's shooting but there are quite often with these games there are able to like turn off like the blood content and things like oh, that good you know so that you can like make it less violent Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So me, for me personally, that's a no-no. I wouldn't. Yeah. I'd, I didn't want to. I wouldn't no. want to play that game. But moving on. Me neither. Me but, neither. Yeah. Back to sewing. <laughs> and okay. Early things. <laughs> ah. Now um, we talked about the calming effects of sewing and how that can help people express and calm themselves. And um, this seems to be a, lo- a lot of attention is being paid to handicrafts of late for mindfulness and um, and as a, as form of therapy and relaxing. Mm-hmm. Now. Something that uh, has been is very interesting, especially in relation to this week's uh, topic or running through Inspire FM, which is the um, campaign we are l- looking at climate change and the impact um, that cl- the climate is having uh, and the environment is having in our day to day lives and how we can turn things around as well. It's a slow process, but we need to be we need to know what steps to take. Now, interestingly, um, fashion is a massive big uh, environmental. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, uh, it plays a massive big role in um, the environment. And fast fashion is a really growing concern, which is actually getting politicians and policies being put into place regarding it and there is a group of women who are actually not willing to buy any additional clothes Um, and one of the key things that we're lacking is actually sewing techniques if we're Mm. kind of back to learning how to Mm. sew then we can actually make adjustments to our clothes we can kind of you know uh, just adapt the clothes that we don't like and turn them into something else upcycle them Um, Mm. ladies uh, would you be would you have you ever uh, thought about not buying any clothes, new items of clothing for, say, possibly a good number of weeks, months, or could you go without for well, a, a year? Being Italian, it means for me to buy classic mm. sort of pieces. Mm. Ah. They're sort of more more neutral in style, mm. and they're less out there, and they're less quirky, and they're less well, apart from this. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is just me expressing myself. Um, but uh, it's about uh, using clean cut 
mm. clothing. They are more neutral, and therefore, when you're wearing something that's actually uh, um, of good quality and, and lasts, you can actually mix and match your outfits, and you don't have to mm. buy so many outfits. You can just highlight it with your accessories and make that contemporary, and make that more fashionable, and make that more current. Mm. And that so, sounds like good advice, actually. And from an Italian who, you know, Italians are known for their classic, elegant dressing. Um, Marshall, Carrie, your thoughts on that? Is that something you could possibly do? Um, it's something I would like to achieve because I know for certain that the fashion industry is the second largest polluter mm. in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say I am quite reserved in the amount that I spend and buy clothes anyway. Mm-hmm. But because I'm very tall, mm-hmm. um, I actually find it quite difficult to to find clothes that fit me well. Mm -hmm. So I am having to be quite selective in the way I buy anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I have to go to places like Long Tall Sally or somewhere, you know, or extra long when I buy my trousers because I'm tall. So In my case, it's just extra short, really. Yeah, so I can't can't really... It's not easy for me to, like, for example, swap with someone clothes or, you know, like, borrow from someone else because they just Uh, won't fit. uh, Do you know what? That's the interesting thing about it, and it's quite fun. It's something I remember a few years ago, somebody suggesting doing these uh, swap parties, Mm -hmm. bring and swap parties. Mm. So if you have clothing that you want to get rid of, that you're not going to you don't quite fit into anymore or you kind of just got tired of but you want to give it away but you'd rather have something else to to swap it with then you have a party with your friends so you could have a a, you know bring garments Mm. items that you you want to get rid of and you swap them with people Mm. that are kind of you know Mm. and that's like decluttering your wardrobe and your house as well because my house is just full of clothes oh my goodness a children and clothes scattered everywhere. We really need to have a deep clutter. And, and no, you have to with young kids because oh they goodness. grow out of them so fast. So You're literally having to recycle their clothes constantly. We do it, we do it in the way that it's hand-me-downs. Uh, and nice. I'm okay. happy to do hand-me-downs. Um, uh, and by the time you're done with that, what, what do you do with... Um, then donate it to a local charity shop. But unfortunately, okay. there is things now coming up about the way we donate and where those clothes go yeah. if they're not sold. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a big cycle that... Um, Yeah, a never-ending cycle. But I think cutting down Mm -hmm. and not being drawn to fast fashion is is a very good way forward. Now, you you mentioned upcycling, swap shops, decluttering Mm -hmm. is the big key word at the moment, which is um, another mindful technique in kind of helping one relax. And decluttering at the moment seems to be very popular, uh, especially by... A lady by the name of Marie Kondo. I don't know if you know about. She's I've kind of a Netflix of phenomena at the moment. Her book, The um, Tidying Up, seems to have a life-changing impact on many people's lives. Um, where she's like, get rid of everything. Well, I don't live know about everything. <laughs> I don't know what everything. Could you do that? Could you just like live in an empty room? Minimalism. That's a the key white thing. Cube. I'm an art history major, so perhaps the white Ooh. cube has got an interest to it. It's got uh-huh. an appeal, but I still have to have something on the walls then. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I'm also quite happy to sit on the floor. So as long as there's a rug somewhere, I don't think I need necessarily a chair. But I draw a line to 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 getting rid of everything. Uh, there's a perk to getting rid of knickknacks and mm-hmm. ornaments because mm. you have less dust in today. Yes. Oh, gosh. Aha, see, now there's already a win-win. You've got yeah. less cleaning to do. Mm, she's selling me already. I don't, need, <laughs> I don't need this book. I just need to listen to Rosa. What about you, Perry? <laughs> oh, I wish I could declutter. I just need a bigger house. My house is just full. I am literally bursting. If you go into my living room and you check out any corner of my room, if you'd like it generally, like, all seems to be okay. It looks lived in, trust me. But then if you could look closer and, like, look behind curtains, you just find stacks <laughs> of stuff she, all over the place. She has tech everywhere. Oh, yeah, we have I a lot of tech in my she house. has tech everywhere. Yeah. I've never seen a... a uh, a I'd never come across a, a remote control caddy oh, yeah. before. Yeah, that's what? my de- that's Sorry, my hold on. I'm just like, I need to take a deep breath. Re- re- what? A remote control caddy. A container, a container with different compartments where all the remote controls yeah. have been held. Ooh. All the remote oh, my controls. my little side Plural. table, I've got like this lovely little leather thing my husband got where you can organise all your controllers from like the big fat ones at the back How to the smaller ones. How many remote controls have you oh, got? Oh, a lot. Lots. See, I just have children. They just like go press that button. That's how, that's how we're Yeah, my children are a little bit older now, so they, they can kind of, they're at the point where they can operate the tech for us. And my husband's also into this thing where we've got Google Hub, Google 
hubs right. in every room so you can actually oh. talk to the Google and say, hey, oh, Google, don't don't turn it's on it's the TV. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we need a visit. I do it within reason. I talk ah. to my phone. I talk to Siri. Yeah, my, no, daughter, <laughs> my daughter laughs herself silly. She says, mum, you're the only person I know that talks to Siri. But then again, Siri will set a, a timer for me. If I, if I put something in the oven and say, Siri, set timer Siri 30 minutes. Siri is our only friend. Um, Siri another will do interesting it. article I came across is the fact that, you know, going on trips with your girlfriends is very good for the heart and soul. So you need to do more of it. Oh, yeah, I'd love to if I can get the chance. It's trying to get everyone's calendar okay. aligned to, to do something. That's the trouble. Star Trek experience <laughs> is coming up in October, end oh, of October in up. Birmingham. <laughs> Beam them up, Scotty. Day, but right. They pass. They pass. Okay. What day of the week is that? <laughs> it's on a weekend. Friday, Saturday, oh, Sunday. But we okay. can go on a weekend. We okay. can go on a Saturday. Can, can we dress up? Can we do that? If you want to go cosplay, yeah, absolutely, yeah, we can cosplay. do that. Cosplay nice. is quite big as well, isn't it? I'm yeah. seeing a lot of hijabis in the cosplay outfits, being yeah. in their favourite characters. We're obviously keeping it modest as well. But, but yeah, but that's the other thing that the latest Discovery series, one of the characters has uh, her uniform variation. She has trousers, but she has a skirt over the trousers, Ooh, knee length skirt, so she's keeping it modest. So I quite like the idea mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I've got a hijab to match as well. So this doesn't quite work. fit in with what we were just talking about, about decluttering. <laughs> And, no, it doesn't. Uh, reducing adding, our wardrobe. Adding more layers. We are repurposing. <laughs> Moving on. Now, folks, this is the Urban Cube, and you know the conversation can go from one end of the spectrum to the other end. That's how we roll on this show. It's keeping it light, quirky, and happening. Now, um, coming back to our fantastic guests who've been absolutely tremendous this morning, it's Carrie Manan and also Rosa Gala, who are in the studio this morning with me, live and direct, and you can catch the conversations on the repeat of the show at 8 p.m. Now, um, Rosa is is a uh, she's a creative writer she's a blogger she's also um part of the Luton Revert group she is part of the management committee and and Kerry Manan is also the chair of the Luton Revert group as well now Kerry is also the secretary trustee for YMO Trust now that's a charity based in Luton helping to keep um and, and support the educational needs of uh, children in Bangladesh Kerry tell us more about this project yeah, so um, YMO started, I think, about 2014, and I've probably been involved for about five years, I think, now. Um, it uh, was originally started by a brother here in Luton, whose uh, home, his, his ancestral home is Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And on a visit to Bangladesh, he kind of saw a lot of poverty and saw a lot of children who were mm -hmm. going into ch child labour. So he came back and thought, what can I do about this? Um, and he got talking with his, his friends and he started up this charity. Um, I'm not quite sure how I got involved. Um, mm -hmm. It was about five years ago. I think they were looking to kind of diversify their management a little bit and mm -hmm. bring in new skills. And at that point, my children were starting to grow up and work full time education. So I had a little bit of free time. So mm -hmm. it just seemed like the right time. And uh, yeah, so it, it's based in Luton, but it operates in Bangladesh okay. in Silet. Um, what they've done is we've uh, initiated two academies in Silet wow. um, where we are basically helping to keep children out of child labour by substituting their education. So whereas families who are really on the poverty line might mm. be having to make that really difficult decision to say, we can't afford to yeah. educate our child. And if we can't afford to educate our child, we need them to earn. Mm -hmm. And so they're really having to make these tough decisions. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we kind of go to those families and say, for your future, for these children's future, they need to be educated mm -hmm. and we will help you do that. So we, what we do is we subsidise and allow them to go within the government scheme of schooling, but we also give them booster classes at our academy and they get really great um, English um, language skills and IT skills is where we uh, really excel mm -hmm. um, as well as um, other subjects. And um, yeah, we, we basically supplement so that they can stay into education. And we've been running now since 2014. And we're actually getting yeah. this year, we're getting our first set of students kind of graduating and now going on to college, oh, mashallah. mashallah. Oh, yeah. So it's really great. Um, just uh, last year, we had a great fundraising within mm -hmm. Luton. Mm -hmm. The Luton community is so supportive, mashallah. Mm -hmm. um, so we had fundraising. And now our newest project is we're involved in uh, an orphanage in Silet. Um, and the orphanage, we're providing teachers, so we're giving them some expertise and, and that we've got experience with mm -hmm. there. 
and um, we are we've also got involved in actually providing them with nutrition because children can't learn if they're hungry and these poor kids in this orphanage mm -hmm. they're probably only getting one meal a day right and if you want to excel and you know get those grey matter cells going, mm -hmm. you need to be well nourished. So mm -hmm. we're actually doing a scheme now where we're providing food to the children as well as the education. So it's kind of oh, a secondary bow to our string now to mm -hmm. kind of help these children so grow. So how can people get in touch with you if they, they like, if they like the sound of the project and want to get involved? So we have a, a website. Mm -hmm. So you just need to Google YMO Trust or www.ymotrust.com, mm -hmm. and you can get all the information about how to donate. And we mm -hmm. yeah, and the Luton people really really are generous mashallah we just have great support the standing Under. order is also, also yeah, a very costs, good way to go yeah i mean it costs for us at the moment to if we want to educate the children it's about 25 pounds a month right, okay. um, and providing the nutritional per aspect mm -hmm. yeah per, per child the nutritional aspect is about 12 pounds 50 a month so we we're very efficient with the way we spend mm -hmm. fantastic very, very busy ladies, and thank you so very much for joining me this morning on the Urban Cube, sharing the amazing work that you, you're involved with and the way you're engaging with the mm. wider community as well, with um, your tremendous insight and um, experiences. It's been an absolute pleasure having you join us, uh, Kerry and Rosa. Oh, thank, thank you so very much. Thank you for, having, thank you for us. having us. We've, we've yes. been watching you like a hawk, and now we think we've picked up a few little tips. <laughs> bless you, bless you. You can catch whether those tips worked or not on the Sunday <laughs> show of uh, Welcome to Islam. Inshallah. which will be aired every is which is already airing yes. but you'll get to hear rosa and kerry on that show now from me it's um a, a massive assalamu alaikum and um yeah i'm going to be enjoying the rest of my pecan pie uh, courtesy of rosa please do catch a repeat of the show at 8 p.m this evening we're on itunes and spotify and i'll be back on 10 o'clock monday once again so from me assalamu alaikum have a great day thank you for listening to our podcast we stream our daily broadcast on inspirefm.org. You'll find all our daily updates on our social media at Inspirefm Luton.